Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about the WAMP amplifier. This amplifier is located just southeast of the home base, and this is right in between the beach amplifier and the home base east. Right, so you got to factor that in when you're making this amp. Now, currently, I'm showing gameplay footage of what I had in the ridge, uh, in the ridge video. Right, so at the end of the video, I showed a preview of the. Uh, WAMP amplifier, right? But instead of explaining the WAMP uh, build before I show the gameplay, I'm going to sh explain the gameplay a little bit first. So you can see over there, this is part of the footage that I saw. So you saw I shot a RPG over there. And because the smasher was hitting on that block off, right? So that signified to me that I did not have enough block off. And so this is the first uh, iteration that, okay. So I'm going to see if I can make improvements on this, make sure I have sufficient block off, and then we can go from there. Okay. In the next clip, um, you're going to see that I actually added a wall at the very end, just that one wall right next to the amp, but uh, the smasher got through in this case, right? So there was another problem I had to solve, and it's probably because I used a floor launcher instead of a tar pit at the last two launchers. So I'm going to replace that with a tar pit, and let's see what happens, right? And in this particular clip, you're going to see that it's going to be a lot safer for the smashers because they're going to be more delayed with the tar pits. Um, but the only problem is, is that the tar pits use a lot of durability, right? So we just have to keep in mind about that and hopefully they don't run out. And in my case, they haven't ran out, so that's uh, pretty good. And another thing uh, I should mention too is that I changed the assassin tunnel, all right? So the assassin tunnel itself, what I ended up doing is that I launched the assassin husk into the water. So they would actually get delayed running back because they're going to start trying to walk back towards me, right? But they're not in my tunnel. So the entire time they're just walking back towards me in a very, very slow pace, right? So they end up not being in my tunnel and there's less husk in your tunnel as a result, right? So it ends up being a very, very secure uh, way to doing this. So in this particular clip, what I try doing is see if what happens if I just stand over here, right? Instead of on that assassin tunnel, right? And this is a very dangerous spot because the lobbers can try to hit me. So um, there's a little glitch with lobbers sometimes where when they shoot at you or shoot at a, a, uh, a structure, they sometimes just completely one hit kill everything. And I have no idea why. Look, whoop. It's like, I don't know why they were able to one hit kill anything like that. Um, so the best solution to just defend on this amplifier is to just stay away from the tunnel, stay away from the amp, and just have faith that it'll work, right? And it'll work, right? As long as you believe it'll work, it'll work. That's how I look at it, all right? Um, the next two clips are going to be part of this patch, so the 12.0 patch itself, right? And to be honest, I didn't notice any difference between last patch and this patch for this particular amplifier. So just have faith that it'll work, and you should be fine, okay? And I think another important point to uh, point out is that all my testing is either way 23 or way 26 because I don't feel like the ways before that are really that meaningful because they're a little bit too easy. And I think it'd be obvious that a build would work for uh, those waves, right? So I think the best way to show it is at a higher level, right? Um, Tests that are at a low level though, for example, if you want to test block off and you want to RPG a smasher, those kind of tests are completely valid, right? But uh, lower levels, don't forget, are going to have a lot lower impact guard with that respect, okay? So uh, let's get right into the building. And we are back in my storm shield. So let's get right into building. Now, the first thing we're going to do is lava bomb shift. This tile here, this tile here, and we good. So that flat floor with this quarter floor. This flat floor is for a very rare lava bomb shift that can happen. I've only seen it once. I put a flat floor over here. It solved the problem. I'm good. All right. Place those four tiles. We'll move on to the tunnel. So as you notice that I have a flat floor over here. The reason, uh, sorry, a half floor over here. It's not a flat floor because if it was a flat floor, there's a rare tornado spawn. I think right about here or so that uh, actually breaks this uh, floor so what I ended up doing is just make it into a half floor and then we good now the uh, ball lights over here wall launchers they're all double reload four times durability so that they'll last all the way till the end of the fourth attack basically assuming you have max trap durability on from your survivor squads right 
<coughs> and if you're using like Machinist Harper in your support, even better. Um, and you can see that there's a slant over here with a diagonal slant and then the slant over here. So these three over here, one, two, three, is for this one flow launcher over here. This one flow launcher is going to launch Hus all the way out, right? And then they're going to drop down. And that particular flow launcher is going to have one reload, two times, wait, no, two reload, one times impact, and three times durability, right? So it's a very durable flow launcher that only requires uh, one impact. And the reason why it's one impact because if it, the impact was too high, it's going to end up launching all the way over there. So I'm going to end up needing to like block off over here or something. So instead, I just want to freelance it and just have a low impact, low knockback, higher durability, and it it fits it fits the barrel just perfectly, right? Uh, just by using that perfect flow launcher. And it's kind of the reason why I have so many flow launchers, right? And so many wall launchers, because there's certain perfect scenarios that just fits it, right? And I'll just insert it. But I understand that you, if you don't have a lot of flow launchers and you just want to use whatever you got, then go ahead and do so, right? Just keep in mind that uh, if you're using a flow launcher that's very high knockback, then may not end up flying somewhere that you don't want, right? So you got to keep that in mind or use appropriate block costs for that. And that would end up creating more structure costs. <coughs> now, uh, passing that with all these low half walls, we're going to see two wall launchers. And both of these are going to be double reload, three times impact with the tar pits. And the reason why is because we want the biggest bang for these smashers, right? We really want to make sure these smashers are going to get uh, staggered down over here. There's not a lot of room to work with, right? There's not a lot of room to work with, so we want to make sure that we bang those smashers all the way down. And so far, it's been actually very stable, right? In terms of banging the smashers down. <coughs> And once they get banged down, they're going to be greeted by either here or down here, which is going to end up dropping down, right? Because if this floor was not here and they got staggered all the way down over here, this is too far for them to path over there. And this is not enough block off for the smashers. So they're just going to break through these walls and go through your block off. So the best solution for that, which I figured out, is to just drop them one tile, float in above, and then let them path diagonally down. Once you do that, and then this will be a shorter of path, right? And this is gonna be better, right? And so far it's been working 100%. As you can see from my videos, by the way, they haven't broken through any of the block offs, right? And so it's a signifying that, yeah, it, it, it's working. It's definitely working, okay? Um, but if you don't have these floors over here, right? With them diagonally path down, I'm 100% certain that they'll always try to break through that walls over there, okay? <coughs> so just keep that in mind. Now, uh, let's talk about this path area over here, right? So this path thing is going to be very critical because the true path thing, the true shortest pathway is actually over here. It's this really long L, a very long L, and that's the shortest pathway. And I'm not sure what's the reasoning behind it. Um, but it seems like this is the shortest pathway from a lot of testing. I tested WAMP so many times, it is ridiculous, right? Testing wave three pathing, testing wave three pathing. That's what, that's one good thing about testing something like low level that happens so early is because it's easy to test the pathing and the block offs, right? So the pathing, where I noticed this is the shortest pathing, and that's really, really weird. But because of this is the shortest path thing, it actually lets me get away with not so much block off. I mean, it's still quite a bit, but it lets me make sure that I have just enough block off that this will work 100%, right? Literally just enough. If I have one less uh, structure, like if I have one less block off, it wouldn't work. <coughs> now, uh, with that in mind, we can go ahead and talk about the assassin tunnel. So the assassin tunnel over here, is gonna have some layers behind, as you can see, right? Flat floor, wall, flat floor, pyramid, wall, slant, and then row of wall launchers. The first two wall launchers are gonna have four times impact, single reload, right? So they'll get launch all the way over there. Most of the time it'll launch over, sometimes it doesn't, right? For whatever reason. And if they don't, that's not perfectly fine. It's not in the world or anything like that because they're just assassin hunters. It's not like they're actually gonna uh, go do anything really. <clears throat> now, uh, the last one's going to be triple uh, impact double reload, right? Because it's because it's going to be a shorter distance. And then I'll just pass them all the way back 
into the home base east over here. And so far, this has not been destroyed at all from the home base east uh, spawns, so which is good, right? Um, but keep in mind that I know 100% there is a rare spawn over here for the home base east, right? There is a rare spawn. It happens very seldomly, but if it does happen, then you can easily rebuild this area, right? You can re easily rebuild this area perfectly fine. Right? But just keep in mind that there is a rare spawn for the home base ETH for that area, right? <clears throat> so there's not really much I can do about that, right? But I haven't actually seen it since I built this, but I do know it exists. I do know it exists, okay? Just like there's a rare spawn over here. I, like, I've only seen it like a, three times or two times, but I know it does exist, right? Um, but they're so rare that I would... And even if they, when they do happen, it's not really that, it's not really going to break your build, right? So I just felt like that this is still good enough, right? This is still good enough for that. And as you saw in my videos, those have been played consecutively, run after run, by the way. Um, I think that's like a total of like eight runs, and it hasn't happened. So I'm like, okay, it's, 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 it is pretty rare. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much the assassin tunnel over there. And you can, and I, and I can camp up there for like, if I just want to watch what's happening. But if you, if you just want to camp somewhere else, that's perfectly fine. This build should work 100%. Okay. Um, now, so for the smashers and husks that do drop off over here, right? It's going to be very important f to make sure that none of these structures get destroyed and that stair does not get hit. Okay, so to prevent that from happening, I have this little half wall over here so that if a smasher is on this side or a husk is on this side, they're not going to end up wanting to break this quarter floor, right? If this was a half floor, the spawn would actually start destroying this half floor, right? There's a chance that it will start destroying it. When I have a quarter floor, it seems to never get destroyed. So I just left it as a quarter floor and just have this half little wall. <coughs> Now I have a uh, half low wall over here to make sure that it can pass through over here perfectly fine without any troubles because I previously had a wall over here I think and they sometimes had troubles pathing over here so I just put a half low wall over here and that should, has been solved with the half uh with not half with the low wall over here right so a full low wall and what they end up doing is that this creates a little bit of a distance uh, for the hus pathing, right? So if if this was non-existent, like if this was non-existent, um, they could end up wanting to path over the, at the edge over here, right? Uh, which is bad because this is actually hitting. It might hit the most there. So to prevent that from happening, just a half little wall is sufficient. Okay. <coughs> now, um, so this is all like the little minute stuff, but this can actually help you a lot with the stability. Okay. And the wall launcher is on the bottom over here. I think this one's just a double double impact single reload. And these are just uh, two times reload, three times impact, and healing. Right? And this is a healing sound wall. Um, so that is the pathing of the uh, husk and the assassin tunnel. Right? So I'm going to talk about the amp design. Right? So the amp design is also going to be very critical. Right? So the amp design over here, as you can see, there is going to be uh, walls all surrounding the amplifier. So 100% walls surrounding the amplifier. Because I'm not really expecting any husk to get through over here. Um, but if you want to, I think it's totally optional and, and it should still work. Is that you could put a, a tar pit over here with a wall launcher in the back. And this would launch and this would actually let the husk will actually path all the way around. All the way around to this little uh, battery thing, right? and they would get launched all the way into the lava. So that is also perfectly fine too, right? But I felt like it was not needed, right? I felt like it was not needed, so I just put walls all surrounding this. And make sure you have a, uh, <clears throat> a, a roof like this, and this uh, slant over here with the wall. So the reason why I have the wall with the slant, right? Because the slant is actually part of the AI, right? So the AI doesn't go wonky, the two slants over there. And the wall is so that if a mini boss comes, right, they're actually going to path all the way around, right? And same thing with the regular house. The regular min pus and mini bosses all path all the way around, okay? <coughs> so I just want to ensure for that to happen, you need to have this block off, right? Uh, I think another way to add the block off is the half low, is these stairs over here, the half low walls. 
Um, but I don't think it's really that necessary. I just use that. Okay, so we have the ant design over here, then I can talk about block off over here, okay? So the block off, what's gonna end up happening is that I'm gonna start with this wall over here. So this wall is, I added, and it's seen far, so far it's been working with the smashers, right? So far they haven't been in the block off, so I'm pretty sure this is actually adding the extra layer that I need. Because <clears throat> if I put walls over here, right, and then this will block the pathing, right, which I don't want. All right, so wall over here, this, uh, the diamond, uh, the slants over here, all surrounding that, and then the walls, this all the way across over here, right? So you can see I have walls all the way across, all the way across over here. I was a uh, kunai storm again, just to let you see. Walls all around here like this, these slants all around, and then these uh, walls all surrounding that. Okay. So essentially you're gonna have quite a bit of layers, right? And I think the total amount is like 17 or so, but uh, I'll have to count it later. <coughs> Excuse me. So once you have that, and we should be able to move on to here, right? So there is gonna be the uh, pyramids, right? With the floors underneath and the walls, right? So pyramid floors, walls underneath, right? And then we're gonna box this all the way around over here to the side, right? You can see from that, and it's gonna extend four tiles, right? Kunai Storm, box this all the way around with, in a one by one as shown, right? And then slant it all the way across like that. Okay. And then the next one is gonna be a six long slant, right? So you can see, you're gonna put walls all the way around one, so it's gonna uh, start with these walls. One, two, three, four, five, six, all the way across. So it's gonna be like a six, six walls all the way across. But behind that, there's gonna be slants six all the way across. Okay, six all the way across like that, and six all the way across like that. Right. I'll explain the lumber shield later. Right. Um. So once you have that, right. So behind that is the four all the way across, right? The walls, and then this one is six all the way across with the walls. Okay, and once we pass that, we're gonna have five across. All right, so you can see over here, there's gonna be slants all the way over here, all the way across like this. All right, five all the way across like that, and box it all the way around. It's quite a bit of block off, but it's gonna be needed. And this over here is just a slant, just to make sure it adds the extra layer over here, and then just close that off with the wall. And then just finish it off with the pyramids and the floors, right? And you should be good to go. Now, you can place walls over here with the uh, low half floors over here, right? Right. And I did this in the past, <coughs> but lately I haven't been doing this and I think it has to do with the husk AI. So if you just had walls over here, right? It really screws up the husk AI. I'm not sure why. And it seems that the smashers, when they view this, these look chargeable, right? Because the smashers do charge on walls, right? Smashers do charge on walls, and there's not really much you can do about it. But as soon as I remove these, in the first layer is actually floors, and the smashers don't charge on floors, so they end up never charging this block off ever, <coughs> or any of these walls, right? Which is nice. Um, because somehow, for some reason, the smashers really like to charge block off. So as long as I disconnect the block off itself, then they'll never charge, right? So, and I'll explain what I mean by that uh, soon, okay? Now, on the bottom layer over here, we're gonna have walls all surrounding this. So three walls over here, and then there's gonna be one wall over here, okay? Floor piece, pyramid. Wall, floor piece, pyramid, that you can see over here. Walls all surrounding that, right? Floor piece pyramid, floor piece pyramid, right? And then that wall. Okay. And then from the north over here, we're going to have the slant, right? So that little slant at the wall over here, okay? And this is just to add additional layering. I don't need a wall over here, right? I don't need a wall over here because this is pathing away to, from the amplifier. And then in the very bottom over here, right? This is actually for both the home based east and for the ramp. So if somehow assassin husks do make it all the way over here, right, for whatever reason, we can have these broadsides just bang them up, right? We can bang them up, the sound wall. 
<coughs> I know a flinger for sure will never make it over because a flinger has a unique ability to slide, right? So they'll far, fly really far with wall launchers. <coughs> okay, but yeah, this is both for the home base east and for the uh, WAMP. Okay. Um, and at the very end of that, we're going to have this wall. I'm uh, sorry, with this floor with the pyramid, right? And this would close off the total amount of layers for that area. Okay. And these floors over here, these are actually not part of the WAMP design. These are actually for home base east, right? Because so, the home base east, the flingers can't kind of fling from here. But the flingers cannot fling from this position over here, right? So that's why I have it designed like that. <coughs> All right. So that is the block off for the front area, right? As you can see, it's quite a bit of block off, right? So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so it's sixteen layers. So sixteen layers of block off, right? And if we do the calculation, the do the calculation correctly, they path one, two, three, four, five. Wait, right, hold on. Did they start over here? That is one, two, three, four, five. So they pass five tiles away from the amplifier, right? And I guess there's gonna be some ramps over here, so yeah, I think yeah, I think that should be fine. So they pass five tiles away from the amplifier, and I think for my formula is uh, three times three plus one. So that is sixteen layers in total, so it's just perfect. Right, 16 layers, just perfect, and that should be just enough for this amplifier. Okay, so let's get right into the uh, lobber shield, right? So the lobber shield is a little bit weird. Because <coughs> uh, you actually don't really need a lobber shield except for uh, this spot, I think. So there's this spot over here that they can fling. Right, so I think this spot over here they can fling from all the way over here. Right? This is the only part we actually need a lobber shield, but the reason why I have it extended further back is actually to prevent flingers from phasing. Right? So sometimes flingers would phase through, right? and it's been really damn annoying when they do, and I've been trying to think of good ways to counter it. Right? And the best way, uh, to my knowledge, to counter that is to have lobber shields extended beyond the layers. Right. So beyond the layers, if you have lobber shields, it'll prevent a lot. It will prevent all the uh, flingers from phasing, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, that is why I am doing this. Okay. So as you can see, to the to design this, I have the, this over here. So the, the lobber shield's connected to the block off, right? It's not connected to anything else. So this over here, I'm going to start at the very middle. So this is from this position over here. Right, so from the position of the amplifier, we start all the way over here, right? And then we will build two across from here, and then from there, just one across, right? And then slant that all the way up in a two by three, right? So you can see wall, three floors, and then the two by three slants all the way across, all right? And then from there, we're gonna build three slants and then two floors. All the way across like that and to and make sure this is actually really important this is probably the one thing that really made the build stable and it's something really small really really small make sure that this does not connect to anything over here make sure it does not connect to any of these walls and anything connected to that right so this lobber shield has to be completely disconnected. So you see over here on the edge it is completely disconnected. This could possibly break the build, right? And this is perfectly fine, right? So make sure your block off is not connected to the tunnel itself, because it's very, very dangerous. The smashers could end up charging your tunnel, which is really bad. <coughs> All right. Um, so as you can see over here, this is also not connected, right? So if I had a flat floor over here, this connects to all the block off, right? This Because this floor connects to that floor, which connects to this floor, and then connects to the walls over here and connects to that. So everything becomes connected. You have to make sure they're not connected whatsoever. Completely disconnected, just like that, right? So all this over here has to be completely disconnected from the front of the block offs over here, right? It, has, it is very important that you do that. And it seems so weird, why would you do that? But yeah, I've done so much testing and it, and it seems to be that way. Okay? 
Um, but yeah, make sure your block off is disconnected from your tunnels and your amplifier. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And that should be it for the ramp uh, itself, right? And but there's going to be a little bit of things that depending on how you build your home base east, right? You're going to need to add, for example, the walls over here, right? So the walls, the way I designed the home base east are very important so that it it doesn't interfere with the lamp design. So the walls over here with the sound walls for my home base east is what I have. Okay. Um, as well, there is going to be the uh, home over here, right? This is for the home base east with the walls, right? To ensure that there's a proper amount of layers so, so that when they land over here, they don't want to break the walls. So there's going to be a total of two layers because I blocked it over here. Um, and the beach, right? So the beach, if they pat towards the beach because you're on the southwest of the side, I have a little uh, thing over here which blocks it, which is just a regular design of beach amplifier, right? And I haven't tried the floor launcher over here, but I'm going to try it. And because sometimes they're going to whack on this land. I want to see if I use a floor launcher, then I think maybe that could be better for a crowd control of the assassin hus. <coughs> but that's pretty much it uh, for that. There is also a rare spawn for the WAMP amplifier, right? So there's a rare spawn that can spawn them all the way in here, which ends up breaking uh, uh, these two tiles over here. So this tile and this tile gets destroyed, right? So there's a rare de uh, spawn that can happen over there, and it's fairly annoying when it does happen, right? But it's extremely rare. Again, it was one of those extremely rare cases, right? Um, but even though if it happens, it's not like your build's going to just get destroyed or anything like that. It's just like, oh, well, there's that. I lost those two walls over here on the beach, and I guess I have to rebuild that for the beach uh, east. All right, that's pretty much it. Um, But yeah, I think that should be it overall for the WAMP AMP video. I don't think I'm missing anything, but there's a lot of little minute things in this build that are going to be very important to keep in the build stable like for example no walls over here right to make sure they don't charge make sure this tunnel is not connected to the block off right there's a little assassin tunnel over here which helps to blaze a ton of husks into the water at, uh, which lessens the density of your tunnel itself right and there's this little thing over here which then prevents those smashers from uh wanting to break on this block off over here they just drop if they just drop straight down and there's also this little area over here which then prevents the uh husk from wanting to break over break this tile over here and make sure that they don't break on this so there's a little minute things that are trying to keep this build stable right but as long as you get all those little minute things down then this will be like a, like one of your most stable amplifiers right guarantee you um but yeah i think that's all of, that's it for overall for the video um, but yeah, have fun building, guys.